Hey, what's up guys? John here. This situation could be 100 times worse than what we experienced in 2020. Bird flu fears are on the rise after a human case was reported this week in Texas. This highly contagious has also been found at Michigan's largest poultry farm. But if you look at a couple of unique variables that are unfolding right now, and you start to kind of connect the dots here, you could see something interesting, possibly. I'm making a prediction. I'm going to go out on a limb here and make a prediction that it's if this does happen, as I say it's happening, you're going to see the people that are listening getting prepared for this, they're going to make out like a bandit. And the people that don't, and coincidentally, the prediction aligns perfectly with what all the billionaires, the multimillionaires, the executives, the really powerful people are all doing right now. And if you don't, then I think you're going to be blindsided, like many people were in 2020. Now, for example, they say, you know, this situation is going to be 100 times worse. You know, even in uh, New Delhi, they're saying that we're inching dangerously close to triggering this. Now, who defines and who declares when this is triggered, right? Well, when this goes into effect, which, you know, they're talking about this happening very, very soon. I'm talking, you know, in the week, in a matter of weeks. Right? And they said that they've been warning us about this. They've been warning us saying that this is going to be coming. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Right? But then you have, interestingly, you have Mark Zuckerberg, you have Jamie Dimon, you have Walmart family, you have you know, Salesforce CEO, you have Warren Buffett, you have all of these multi, multi, multi billionaires liquidating, sitting on a massive pile of cash. Some of which are even going as far as building bunkers and survival shelters and doing things like that. But they're sitting on mountains of cash as if a big problem could be coming right down the road. Now, some could say it's the overvalued stock market, overvalued real estate market. The economy is walking off cliff's edge. It could be because of the bank term funding program uh, that expired on the 11th of March. You know, that's going to be hitting the fan soon. It could be commercial real estate, right? I personally think it's going to be a rug pull that's going to be coming. And all of these things are going to be coming to a head. Now in this video, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to show you what happened in 2020 and why what I believe could happen next is going to be of great magnitude, great magnitude greater than what we're witnessing, uh, what we've witnessed in the past. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share the content, educate more people about what's going on in America. If you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Take a look at this. So in 2020, right, inside of less than one month, in April, everything basically, you know, March, April, everything was shut down. So May 12th, they've already recorded 100,000 small businesses closed forever, right? 100,000 closed forever. Now, they said that one third of all small businesses in America, and now the only, you know, 14 months after this whole thing, you know, was in effect, one third of all businesses, all small businesses in America closed. But large corporations, the Walmarts, you know, the uh, Amazons, these large, large corporations did extremely well. Their stock skyrocketed. They built out massive infrastructure, hired millions and millions of employees. You know, they were even paying six-figure salaries for truck drivers. It was a free-for-all. They were, they were making it like a bandit. They were getting so much market share, right? This time, I think it's going to be like that, except 10 times, you know, greater for them. Because when we walk into the next situation, the money printer is going to go, you know, crazy. And where's that money going to go? It's going to go to the big corporations, right? It's going to go to the stakeholders, right? These large corporations and these large corporations are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what's going to happen. Sadly, that's what's going to happen. Because remember, during, you know, in 2020, September 4th, 2020, through August 2021, there was a federal eviction moratorium, national, right? So nobody could, you know, collect rent during that period if you were a landlord in most cases. Your tenant didn't have to pay, right? 70% of all mom and pop properties are owned by mom and pops, right? Obviously, you know, they own one deal, two deals, three deals. It's not a large corporation. You know, it's a husband and wife. It's a, you know, an older man, an older woman. You know, they bought a property and they're hoping to have a retirement plan, right? Well, they were unable to collect rent for that entire year. During that same exact time, what's very fascinating is some of the largest, largest real estate players in America, you know, the Blackstones, you know, the Starwood Capitals, the Invitation Homes, they were showing record profits 
record profits at a time when mom and pop investors, many of which, were showing record losses, right? So how was that possible? Well, during that period, what happened, people were afraid to move. And these large corporate you know, landlords, they were getting direct checks. You know from who, right? So they were getting direct checks from Big Brother and it was offsetting. You know, they were able to increase rents and people didn't want to move. So it was a perfect scenario. When Maxine Waters, what she said to mom and pop property owners was to go to a bank and get a loan if you need help. That's what she said. You look it up. That's what she said, right? So the mom and pop businesses got wrecked. The mom and pop landlords got wrecked. Who do you think will get wrecked the next time around? Well, it's going to be mom and pops. It's going to be the small business owner, right? Now, when you pay very close attention to what's unfolded across property rights over the last several years, you can see where the trend is heading. In Canada, they're moving forward on a national renter's bill of rights, which will allow, I mean, look at this. This will allow the landlord will be required to disclose a unit's pricing history to allow tenants to negotiate their rent, right? They want to put tenants in a place to negotiate the rent. Meanwhile, the landlord's costs have went up through the roof and the last several years being a landlord, especially in Canada, hasn't been easy, right? So on top of this, there's going to be access to free legal counsel. So tenants will get access to free attorneys. They'll get access to a blanket lease that's going to be formed by the government in Canada, not by you know, the landlord. There's going to be one lease that the government's going to have that you know, the landlord and tenant's going to sign. So, so much for property rights for and a landlord having say over their property in Canada. Right? Well, the same situations are unfolding here in America. Right? So when you see you know, this look, clean and fair leases, right? this is on the website right here. You can pull it down so you can see it. Then you have education, enforcement, enhancement of rights, r the right to organize, essentially go on strike, right? uh, eviction prevention, diversion and relief, all of these different protections that are different, but also one and the same from Canada. Right? They're, it's very, very similar. Then there's this discussion about a national, nationwide rent control, right? Vice, you know, Washington Post, that they're announcing rent increase caps on uh, low income housing tax credit units, which is 1 million, 1 million units, uh, which is already in effect, right? So you have USA Today, federal rent control debate over national rental protections. So they're moving in this direction and it's, uh, it's happening pretty quickly. So in the event that we walk into this situation, let's say this year, let's say, you know, in the next six months, in the event that that did happen, do you think that there would be an eviction moratorium again? Do you think that this time around, it would be a lot more uh, difficult being a landlord or a property owner, especially given the fact that borrowing costs went from 3% to 7%, insurance premiums went through the roof, cost to maintain properties through the roof? I would bet that what we're likely going to see here are a lot of landlords that will soon be leaving the business, whether it be through a situation like this, I'm not, and again, I want to be very, very clear. I'm not saying that this is going to be the one, I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying a situation like it, because when this is in effect, in my opinion, it's not a matter of if they're going to exercise that power. It's a matter of when they will be doing that. And when they do do that, it will be a way in which they're going to be able to multiply the corporations. They're going to be able to multiply in strength, right? And when you have $17 trillion, in wealth held by American middle-class families, how is that wealth going to be extracted? Well, most likely through the property, right? And the property is, you know, a predominantly large block of where that wealth is stored, right? Inside of their business, inside of their properties, right? So what I think is going to happen, look at this, Yahoo Finance, Biden's broad plan to help renters comes at the expense of mom and pop landlords. Here's what to do if you still want to own a slice of the real estate pie, right? Then here's what you need to know about the rent caps. This came out yesterday. Like, this is the direction where we're moving. Here's what tenants need to know about Biden's plan to cap rent hikes and for some affordable housing units. Now, I'm going to be very, very clear. I love real estate. I love real estate. You know, almost all my money that I've ever made is in real estate. But the facts are the facts. Chasing small returns right now, you know, 5 6% re yields, 7% yields in a market where inflation is it, you know, much, much higher than what a lot of people would like to believe. And, you know, borrowing costs are through the roof and the cost and risk associated right now with investing in multifamily just don't make any sense. And the amount of risk and amount of the likelihood of a black swan like event coming soon, which could change every dynamic of multifamily real estate 
just to me doesn't make as much sense as it did you know years ago now i believe inside a period of massive massive unrest and panic there will be a ton of opportunity to go out there and invest in real estate but you have to be very very strategic you have to know the new rules to the game because they in my opinion i believe that the rules of the game are getting rewritten they it started getting rewritten in 2020 over the next couple of years it's going to it's going to get very very different so make sure you have cash in the bank i mean make sure you have cash in the bank make sure you have a stable income make sure you have great credit you have low debt and you're mobile right being mobile is going to be important i think we're going to see some really really big changes i just have a weird feeling in the air that 2024 is just going to be a year that's going to be very different than you know anything that we've experienced in the past i think it's potentially this year or next year will be way more difficult than you know 2020. What do you think about this situation? Drop below, let's have a conversation about this. Do you think we've seen the end of the eviction moratoriums, the end of the restrictions, the end of these modifications for small businesses, or do you think it's just the beginning? Let's have a conversation below. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in a credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Catch you next video.